This video demonstrates an axillobifemoral artery bypass for a patient with aortoiliac occlusive disease with prohibitive risk for in situ reconstruction. The patient is placed on the table in a supine position with a donor extremity abducted. It is imperative to be able to abduct the ipsilateral upper extremity to ensure appropriate length of the bypass graft. Following this, bilateral groin incisions are created in an oblique incision to avoid creating an incision over the groin crease. Dissection is carried through the subcutaneous tissue and fascia in a standard femoral artery exposure. The superficial femoral artery is controlled with a silastic loop, followed by the common femoral artery. And finally, the profunda femoris artery. Profunda femoris artery branches are also controlled in a POTS fashion. This is similarly performed on the right side. We then turn our attention to the axillary artery exposure. An infraclavicular incision is created. The dissection is carried down to the pectoralis major muscle. The fibers of the pectoralis muscle is spread and cauterized parallel to the muscle fibers. All lymphatic and venous branches are ligated with silk ties. The dissection should continue medial to the pectoralis minor muscle. Careful dissection is performed. The brachial plexus is dissected free and retracted with a silastic loop. The axillary artery and vein is identified. The artery is controlled with a silastic loop. All branches are controlled with silastic loops in a POTS fashion. Once the vessels are controlled, tunneling is performed prior to administering heparin. A counter incision in the axilla lateral is created. Another incision is created in the ipsilateral flank in order to accommodate the prefabricated bifurcation of the ringed PTFE graft. Once the counter incisions are created, a 65 centimeter gore tunneler is used to tunnel the graft from the ipsilateral flank incision to the axillary incision. After this, the graft is tunneled from the axillary incision to the infraclavicular incision. Next, the left limb is being tunneled in the suprapubic subcutaneous space to the left groin incision. We turn our attention back to the axillary artery. The patient is systemically heparinized and the axillary artery is clamped proximal and distal. An arteriotomy is created and an endocyte anastomosis is performed with a running proline suture.
Once this is completed, we turn our attention to the left groin. The common femoral, SFA, and profunda are clamped. And our directomy is performed at this point. And endocide anastomosis is performed in a running fashion. On the right side, the SFA, profunda, and common femoral arteries are clamped. An end arterectomy is similarly performed. However, on this side, the SFA is occluded and therefore the incision is extended into the profunda artery. Again, an end aside anastomosis is performed in a similar fashion. Hemostasis is achieved in all wounds, and the wounds are closed in a standard fashion.